So earlier I tried to explain that I'm just a normal person. Okay, I'm a normal guy. I went through the whole going through the university system and I woke up to something that was really bad. Okay, now if everybody um, can take a moment, if you have Facebook, can you take out your smartphone and go live on Facebook right now? Is that a possibility? Does anybody have Facebook Live? I just want to tell the world that this is actually going on. Because I get censored. Um, I get censored um, on Facebook. Facebook censors whenever I post something about chemtrails or vaccines or something like that. Nobody gets to see it even though I've got 20,000 followers. OK. So I'll just get started. And again, thank you for bearing with us and thank you for coming. So. One of the things, one of the biggest issues with chemtrails is the terminology. The CIA, the military industrial complex, they have done a very, very good job at complicating the issue. And the thing is about the military industrial complex, it's no longer just the military and industry merged. Okay? Welcome to the heart of the beast. It also in involves the educational system. It's a four-way merger now. It's the educational system. It's the military. It's corporation, and it's the lawmakers, okay? So all these people are now work together to, and pharmaceuticals, sure. So please visit these websites, climatechangeagenda.com, stopsprayingus.com, actualactivist.com, my new website, and byebluesky.com. Okay, chemtrails are also called solar geoengineering. It's also called solar radiation management. It's also called stratospheric aerosol injections. Okay, and what they like to do is they like to confuse us with the terminology. When I first started waking up to chemtrails, what I did was, and hello anybody on Facebook Live, I just wanted the people in the audience to let the world know that we are having a global chemtrail summit today in Portland. Okay, we're going to have another one this year in Seattle. All right, and we're going to keep having events like this until we do something about it and until we wake up enough people to make a change. Thank you. So when I first started waking up to this, I went on Google Alerts, and I put into Google Alerts the word chemtrails and the word geoengineering, and I got updated every time an article came out on either of these topics, chemtrails, geoengineering. And I thought I was so smart because I found out about this word geoengineering. I'm really fancy, right? Well, come to find out, behind closed doors, there are all these other terms that I was not privy to. Tropospheric aerosols. The tropospheric aerosol program came out in the year 2000 through the Department of Energy. But the truth lies in the hidden terminology. Stratospheric aerosol injections is what the CIA director refers it to. Solar radiation management is another term. Okay, so when you're trying to wake someone, someone up to this, the goal is to keep everyone confused. So if you use the word chemtrails, you're a crazy person. If you, were, if you use the word geoengineering, then that's what they're talking about is saving us by blocking out the sun with aerosols. Stratospheric aerosol injection, something else. All these other terms, they all come together under one umbrella. It's all the same thing, okay? Even albedo modification, the albedo, from albedo effect. Albedo modification is enhancing the reflectivity of the earth. They also call it cloud whitening. They, you, if you knew, if I knew, 10 years ago, all of these different terms, I'd be so ahead of the game. There's articles upon articles about cloud whitening and albedo modification and stratospheric aerosol injections. Through NASA, it's a totally different program. They have noctilucent cloud formations and ionos ionospheric steering. Okay? So we did a, a normalization timeline is what's going on here. Okay? And I want to walk you through this, and this is what my presentation is going to go over. In 2010, the media, along with the military industrial complex, coupled with the educational system and everything, they came out in 2010 and said, we got to stop global warming. Okay? Now, that whole global warming thing is a big story, but CO2 is not warming the planet. Okay? Spoil alert. And also, their agenda to save us from global warming is all part of this, this plan to basically gain control of the environment and the people. So the media starts pitching to us that geoengineering is a bad idea but an option in 2013. A study comes out in 2017, chemtrails are not real. Okay? 
sorry, 2016 is that, August 2016, that's a typo. Then in December 2016, they come out and said that calcite is our savior, that we're going to use calcite to geoengineer the planet. Then Obama signs off on geoengineering in January. Then the headline comes out, slowly conditioning us, saying that we're going to lose our stars. They don't talk about the sun, but we're going to lose our stars. We're going to lose our night sky. Then they introduce to us new clouds, and they announce to us that they're going to be solar geoengineering the sky. Okay? It's all an attempt to normalize this. They frame the debate, they frame the terminology, and they control the entire conversation to control the outcome. Okay? So we have two sides of the spectrum. We've got chemtrails, which is a dirty word. Okay, if you use the word chemtrails, you're a crazy person because the CIA has done a very, very good job. They created this word. They coined the term, and then they did a very, very good job through their civil society actors, which I'll get into, which is the media and different people involved in our society that, quote, manifest the will of the public, is what these civil society actors are, and they frame our opinions. They frame our mental constructs on the issue. Okay, so chemtrails, they made a really dirty word. And then geoengineering, they've turned it into a, a, a solution to our problem, which is global warming. So Hegel, H-E-G-E-L, is a German philosopher, and he, back at the turn of the century, 1900, he came up with this paradigm problem, reaction, solution. It's even called the Hegelian dialectic. And what is done is the military industrial complex, whoever it be, they create the problem. They already have a solution waiting for you. Okay, the war on terror, right? What's the solution? More war, More war right? What was the problem? 9-11, we, we all know that that was BS. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the consolidation of media first, because I want everyone to grasp that there is no more trusted news sources. Okay? In 1983, we had 50 companies, right? 90% of the media, 1983, 50 companies were encapsulated the 90% of the media. Now it's been consolidated down to six companies. Those six companies are owned by just a couple families. Everything is controlled. Later on, I'm going to play, later on in the day, I'm going to play a clip from Conan O'Brien. He goes through and shows how scripted it is verbatim. They hand a script to the entire nation, and your local broadcaster is reading something that was planned to build your mental construct to control the way you think about everything. Okay. So this is, a this is a screenshot from this website from 2012. Okay. This is a meeting of civil society actors. All right. And in this meeting, they talk about governance. OK, first off, let me just go back up. Civil society actors. There were 40 people in this room, all coined civil society actors. These are non-governmental participants that, quote, manifest the will of the public, okay? These are media conglomerates. These are your local media, your local Greenpeace organizations. They call these AstroTurf because almost everything has been co-opted. AstroTurf is like the fake green. Hi, thank you for coming, okay? So we have these fake green organizations, and in this meeting, they contemplated how they were going to convince us that we need solar geoengineering to block out the sun. They are convincing us that we need chemtrails. Okay? So, in this, they say, society is lousy at strategy, but we are not. They also say that we can, in the middle paragraph, we, a few suggested that to shift the conversation in productive ways, geoengineering will be characterized publicly as a terrible choice. Geoengineering, in other words, can be viewed by civil society organizations as a strategic opening, as a way to bring home the horrors of climate change to policymakers and the public. So they wanted to start the conversation to ultimately frame our mental construct. Problem, reaction, solution. Well, first, we'll start the conversation by introducing them this problem, and we'll tell them that it's a horrible idea. So here they come out. 
immediately. Geoengineering, a horrible idea. Geoengineering climate fixes could harm billions, but now they've started the conversation. You see how that works? So, in 2016, while they're starting this conversation, they need everybody who thinks that chemtrails are real, that, and that are privy to this information, that have been looking up and waking up and speaking up and seeing these persistent linear cirrus cloud formations out of the back of jets. They want all those people to be ridiculed. Okay? Ridiculed by your peers, ridiculed by the media, ridiculed by the educational system. Okay? So, and a paper came out through the University of California, Irvine. They interviewed 400 scientists. 77 of the scientists responded. 76 out of 77 debunked the chemtrail conspiracy theory. Okay? So, in my Google Alerts, on this date, I received dozens of updates of all of the media convincing the world chemtrails are not real. And this was the study. Now, it was ran by Mick West and David Keith. David Keith is a proponent. He is a solar geoengineer. He works at Harvard, and he is the guy with the patents. He's the guy making money off of them spraying us with barium, aluminum, strontium, modifying the climate, blocking the sun. Solar geoengineering means blocking the sun. Okay? And they think it's a good idea because they need to save us. So they have this complicated survey that out of all the scientists surveyed, 77 out of 400 responded, and 76 out of 77 said, yes, there is no SLAP program, which the SLAP is just something that they just coined, the SLAP, which is a secret large-scale atmospheric program. And Mick West, who was in charge of this study, is a nobody. Okay, and we're going to talk about this guy as well. So, here we have on August 14th, August 16th, during this short time frame, Forbes magazine, chemtrails are not real. Washington Post, chemtrails are not real, showing a picture of chemtrails. <laughs> USA Today, scientists have disproved air airplane chemtrail theory. So if you're new to this, you're being educated by your trusted news sources, okay? And they're telling you there's nothing to see up there, don't worry. But wait, wait in six months, they're gonna tell you they've got a cure for global warming, and it's identical with, to what they have proven to you does not exist. See where I'm going with this? New York Times. Okay, these are major publications, global publications, all under the same umbrella, all with the same scheme, all meeting with this civil society actors meeting in Washington, D.C. to frame our mental construct of it all. And it's a numbers game for them. They know how many people are in this room. They don't, give a, they don't care, okay? Because they know how many people read the New York Times, and they know that when you go home and you say, oh, I learned so much, that your roommate is going to say, oh, I read the New York Times. That's bogus, okay? So not just the New York Times, not just the Washington Post, but all of these fake publications ran with this on this day, okay? Chemtrails aren't real. New study. Chemtrails not real. Expert consensus. The experts are in. The experts are in. But they're showing you pictures of chemtrails telling you that this is not real. Okay? So that you look like an idiot when you try to wake people up. And the people will have their cognitive dis dissonance. They won't be wake up a bowl because they've already been gotten to by the media. They have this, they're so meticulous and smart about the way they plan this out because it's their goal to block out our sun, totally block out our sun. We will see dark days in our lifetime. They're going to block out our sun, okay? And so they're working it out, all right? So this was August 14th, August 15th, August 16th. Okay, I'm getting all these updates in my email, chemtrail article, chemtrail article, chemtrail article, and I'm like, I've got to get this out to the world. How am I going to tell everybody, you know? And then here we go, a week later, once all that dust has settled and everybody's been programmed, then we have this one guy, David W. Keith. He's got a plan. He's going to save us from global warming by shooting particles in the atmosphere. How's he going to do it? Maybe by a plane, maybe by a boat, maybe by a balloon. All right? 
So guess who else wants to save us? Okay, starting back in 2010, Bill Gates has his hidden dreams of geoengineering revealed. Bill Gates is part of the Royal Society. The Royal Society has patent pools on all of this technology. David Keith, Bill Gates, and just a handful of globalists. Okay, they have the patents. They have the military industrial complex in their pocket. They have the politicians in their pocket. Okay, and they are going to get paid to block out our sun. And, and this guy, he funds it all already. And specifically says, no, it's not the Bill Gates, Melinda Gates Foundation. It's Bill Gates private donations. Okay? We need a miracle. We're going to save the planet. Problem, reaction, solution. And this guy's a scumbag, in case you don't know. Okay. So let's talk about this paper. 17% responded, secret large-scale atmospheric program. Okay, Mick West, Ken Caldera, Stephen J. Davis, and the David Keith's name's not on here, but it's throughout the entire paper. So who is Mick West? Who is this guy that authored this paper to brainwash the masses? Well, he's a debunker. He's a computer programmer that has the website metabunk.com. You go to metabunk.com, he will debunk anything out there. He'll debunk 9-11. He'll debunk a bicycle that makes electricity. I'm not kidding. And he debunks, of course, chemtrails. Okay? People make, he's telling people that they're crazy. Okay? So, um, I'm Microsoft founder Bill Gates. Okay? U.S. geoengineers to spray sun reflecting chemicals from a balloon. So, they think that we're so dumb that we see the lines coming out of the planes, we see these rare halos going around the sun, and then all they have to say in the newspaper is, well, we're going to use balloons, don't worry. And, people are, and, and then the, the argument is there. You've got millions of people reading all these publications saying, no, they're going to do it from balloons. And I'm like, no, I've got time-lapse videos. I'll show you what they're doing. It's pretty obvious if you just start to wake up. So, if all else fails, The Economist, a once trusted news source, man-made global cooling is scary, but may become necessary. So they've introduced it as a scary thing, problem, but it's a solution. And then they show us a NASA satellite photo of crazy chemtrails, but we're supposed to think that this is a potential solution in the future, not something going on now. The Economist. New York Times. Can humans go from unintended global warming to climate by design? 2016. So based on just looking at you beautiful people, I can tell most everybody in here already knows what's going on, that there's kitten trails and what they are. But it's a word derived from a chemical trail <clears throat> the purposes are weather modification. See, the thing about this is they love to confuse us. There's so many purposes. Okay? Chemtrails is not dumping poison on all of us to kill us all. Maybe 1% of the time they're testing things on us. They test biological agents. And if you're, if you're Facebook living, that's great. You don't have to do it the whole time. I just wanted people to know that we were doing this. But feel free to do the whole thing. I don't care. Um, I just want the word out there that we came together and did this today because we're going to do it again and again and again. So contrails are just burned gas. Okay? If you see a plane in the sky with nothing, that's a contrail. You see a plane in the sky with a little bit dissipating immediately, that's a contrail. I was outside all day yesterday, passed out 2,000 flyers in the city. Not one person is here, by the way. It's OK. Um, <laughs> passed out 2,000 flyers. I didn't see a single persistent linear cirrus cloud formation all day long. Okay, I saw only contrails. They weren't doing it yesterday. <sighs> I'm just going to run. This is, this is a lot of slides. Okay, one thing that's important is simple jet engine exhaust would not be seen from space. Okay, 
You've got harp technology that makes it come into this, this um, frequency looking thing on, on your top left image. And then we've got people with cognitive dissonance, especially the kids, okay? If they didn't grow up with the sky that we knew, they can easily reject this, okay? They say, quote, they wouldn't do that to us. They say, quote, that would take a lot of money and resources to do something like that, okay? I've done grassroots activism. I pass out flyers almost every day for the past two years. I've heard it all, and I can look you in the eyes and, and, and decide how I'm going to approach you, and I can tell if you know about chemtrails. I'm telling you. I can see it in your eyes, and I can go up and say, hey, you know about chemtrails, right? And otherwise, I can, I can approach their cognitive dissonance and say, hey, have you heard of solar geoengineering? Do you know that they're going to block out the sun? Have you re read the recent articles? Well, let me tell you what's really true. You know what I mean? But the cognitive dissonance is the biggest roadblock, and you just have to learn how to talk to people, okay? Not everybody wants to be shaken and told that we're dying. Right? <laughs> okay, five reasons chemtrails are not contrails. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear through all this, and I'd love to provide this presentation. There's even been a point where I was trying to pay people to give this presentation, okay? The persistence of the trails, it's very, very obvious a chemtrail does not behave like an actual cloud formation. It forms out and fades into a milky haze, all right? Irregular pattern of appearance, this one is huge for me. The number of trails seen simultaneously at a given time, when you're sitting out there and it's a normal day and then all of a sudden a dozen planes show up and grid the sky, whereas you've seen three planes all day, something is going on there. That's it. It's that simple. When you want to wake up your friends and your family, just tell them that. Just talk about the irregular uptick in air traffic. How come all of a sudden all the planes show up at once and zigzag the sky? Let's start there, okay? We got broken trails, all right? Things are going on where they're mixing chemicals in the sky, they're using the atmosphere as a laboratory. That is a quote from NASA, using the atmosphere as a laboratory, okay? The exhaust is often coming where the engines are not, okay? This wakes the people up. I've got a friend from high school I gave the presentation to a dozen times, and he never believed me, and then one day he saw this slide, and his jaw dropped. He said, well, what, what, well how come it's not coming out just on the engines? It's because there's, there's sprayers lined up on this particular plane kind of thing. Okay, in the chemtrails, there's been NASA admitted to spraying lithium over Portland, Oregon. This happened. They, they experimented with lithium, in the upper atmosphere a few years ago. Um, they also use aluminum to make it not rain. They also use barium and strontium to block out the sun. They also use silver iodide to make it rain. Okay? A lot of different concoctions in here. Now, this term, aerotoxic syndrome, did not exist until 1999. You got flight attendants getting sick. You got flight attendants getting so sick that they're blaming the uniforms. If you look this one up, it's out of control. They're blaming the flight attendants' uniforms for why they can't breathe, okay? In 1995, the U.S. government came out and said they wanted to own the weather by 2025. And then since 95, you've seen a statistically significant uptick in persistent linear series cloud formations. And then a few years later, you've got things like aerotoxic syndrome, aerotoxic association, Ted Gunderson was Los Angeles FBI chief. He made a website. He did numerous interviews. He was demonized and he died mysteriously. Yeah. He was very vocal. He was the F LA FBI chief. He even called out where the planes were coming from and landing. He called them death dumps, is what he called the chemtrails. Rest in peace. Prince. Along with Dick Gregory, his, he, he really looked up to Dick Gregory. They both died mysteriously. They both were very outspoken against chemtrails. Prince even sang about chemtrails. Okay, so it's not just you and I that are waking up. A lot of people are waking up at once. Kylie Jenner, she's a Kardashian, all right? She even 
tweeted this. She has more followers on Instagram than anybody on earth. This woman, she asked the big question, why are some days normal with no planes? Spraying. And others look like this. To me, that's the perfect intro to, for people. Like when there's a blue sky, I say, well, where are they now? Get out and vote for sunny weather. Thanks again to the Calgary um, couple for going over the news articles. I'm just going to breeze through a few of these. In 73, when we had trusted news sources, they thought that we were going to be voting for our weather because they saw that it was being controlled. And they said, well, how are we going to deal with this? Who's going to get the rain, who's not? Well, it went covert is what happened. Here's another one. I deleted a lot of the history slides because the history is a little dense. But there was one called Operation Large Area Coverage. Okay? There was actually six, where did I write this? Six simulated attacks were conducted on the San Francisco Bay Area. They used biological agents via aerosols. They spray biological agents on the city of San Francisco. They released plumes over the ocean and let it roll in. They did all these experiments to see how many people got sick. They tested this in the 50s on us. They flooded the Ho Chi Minh Trail because they knew how to do it. And they turned rain into a war weapon in Vietnam. Immediately following, a weather war ban was approved, but in the verbiage, they said, you can do it to your own people. We just don't want you doing it across international borders, because then how are we going to see if our experiments are working on our people or not? <laughs> this guy, you like that one? This guy, Kucinich, he proposed a ban on space-based weapons. In the ban, Article 2, he says, no chemtrails. They pulled him aside and said, no, 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 that's a crazy word. He took it out, and so he took it out, because we don't want people waking up fast enough, because guess what, we're going to block out the sun in 2017. That's the plan. So 2025, the future is now. This is a, a NASA document. NASA's budget is $54 million a day. Okay? If you look into NASA Operation Paperclip, they're actually a bunch of psychotic Nazis. All right? NASA, NASA is a bunch of liars. I'm sorry. They came over after World War II, and their $54 million a day goes into spraying us. Okay? They have used this money and their black ops budget to even design a new class of weaponry, which is legal. Legal. They've designed a micron-sized, mechanized, mechanized dust, which is distributed as an aerosol, inhaled into lungs. This dust mechanically bores into lung tissue and executes various pathological missions. Okay, this is your tax dollars, 54 million a day. This is the um, U.S. Air Force document I was referencing, owning the weather by 2025. Came out in 1996, talked about weather as a weapon. They're way ahead of schedule. They own the weather now. President of Iran, Ahmadinejad, he speaks out. He says in an interview a few years ago, he says, my contacts from Europe reach out to me. They said that, they, that, that Europe was creating drought over Iran that they were emptying the clouds before we got there, before we got the clouds. He said he thought it was completely bogus, so he got a team of scientists to get involved, and he found out it was true. Weather weaponry covert on our enemies and ourselves. Okay? This is Hurricane Joaquin. This is two summers ago. 1,000-year flood in South Carolina. Okay? We've gotten a lot of 1,000-year things recently, mind you. They weaponized this hurricane. They held it in place for a full day. The energy from the hurricane's eye was put into a directional weapon. They weaponized an arm of this hurricane and blasted South Carolina and killed people to test their weapon. So look familiar. What they do is they spray these nanoparticulate metallics via aerosols. They zap them with harp, 
We have the harp specialist, Ilana Freeland. She's got a book out there. I highly, highly recommend it. And I'm, I'm sorry to say, I just started reading this thing, and it's amazing. I'm halfway through it, and it is, she's got it. It's, it's worth it. It's very worth it. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into chemtrails because we have Alana here. But what they do in a very simple way is they lay out the metallic dust. They use Tesla technology to zap that dust to create high pressure. If you can create high pressure system, you know when you watch the Weather Channel back in the day, you've got H's and L's. H's and L's is high pressure and low pressure. If you can create high pressure system, heat rising, you can steer things around. And they use this to steer the ionosphere. Okay, you've got different levels of the atmosphere. One of them is the ionosphere where the jet stream is. And that jet stream is not a stream, it's a river. And it's literally going. And you can steer it around. Or they can steer it around. I wish we could. Okay, so here's an example of one of these ionospheric heaters. One. There's dozens of these around the planet now. This is the first one in Alaska. And if you want to talk about global warming, ionospheric heaters need to be in that conversation. Okay? It's an antenna array, it's Tesla technology, and they actually have to use two of these at the same time to heat the atmosphere and steer part of the ionosphere to direct the weather. And Tesla, he said, if you can maintain control of these frequencies, you can directly control the entire mental system of mankind. Okay? So that's where we're heading. So, for people that are, are like, show me the proof, all right? When things get patented, it's because they have the technology. It's not because they're thinking about it. They patent it because they have it already made and they don't want their competitors to come out and copy them, okay? 1974, rockets having barium release system to create ion clouds in the atmosphere. Now, sometimes you're going to see what, you, what your mental construct tells you, oh, that must just be a plane, but it's got a different trajectory looking, right? That's actually a barium release rocket. They prime the atmosphere with different chemicals as they use the atmosphere as a laboratory. So one of these chemicals that they have to put up to mix with the other chemicals to see what it does to create their ions in the atmosphere, to create these radioactive particles that stick up there longer, that block the sun, or really trap in heat and cause global warming, these things are patented in 1974. 1975, powder contrail generation. 1991, creation of artificial ionization clouds above the Earth. 1991, stratospheric seeding for reduction of global warming. 2009, aluminum tolerant genetics. Okay, so. Monsanto comes out and starts patenting aluminum-resistant genetics. Why? Because they're in the know. Monsanto bought Climate Corporation three years ago for a billion dollars. Monsanto has now merged with Bayer for $66.6 .6 billion. Monsanto was bought last year. And now, again, it's all being merged, like you said, Raphael, into the pharmaceutical, not just the military, industrial, educational, <laughs> with, with the political system, now they've got the drugs. So the people who are poisoning us are making us well. And so they knew what was going on. They know that we're getting dumped with aluminum. We're going to keep talking about that later. Yes. It's all connected, especially Alzheimer's and, and all this stuff. But I know, I know other speakers, speakers will be going into this. Enhanced delivery systems of large quantities of fluids and powders, 2010. Okay. And chemical atmospheric aerosol distribution methods, these patents just go on and on and on. And if people are looking for proof, this is a really nice place to start because the patents just go on and on. And now, starting in 2009, there's been an exponential increase. And they even claim through the university system, through Chicago, Northwestern, they claim that we need a whole new rule for patent law, that the patent lawmakers don't understand geoengineering, and that we don't have the time, and that they actually have exclusive rights to saving the planet, and so that they need to push it all through. So literally, <laughs> this, this meme, I was going to remove it, okay, but I started thinking about it. They literally came out with new clouds a couple months ago. They have introduced to us new clouds. 
Okay? They have new cloud names. They're putting them in the books. They're indoctrinating the children. And they're telling the kids that these clouds always existed, but now we just have to name them. They came out with 12 cloud names in March of this year. And they normalize it through Hollywood and the media. And the kids don't even know that they're being socially conditioned. They're being engineered. They're being programmed. All of us are. Okay, I'm not immune from it. So the headlines really tell a story. So from BBC, March 26, 2017, Kim trails to be recognized as a new type of cloud. Okay? Is it okay to tinker with the environment to fight climate change? This is all part of the normalization process to make it feel like okay what they're doing and what they're going to do especially. Major publications normalizing the ongoing crime. Bad idea that we need. Geoengineering, the bad idea that we need. How to fake a volcano, right? So Mount Pinatubo, it erupted and it supposedly blocked out the sun and lowered the temperature on Earth. Okay, this eruption in the Philippines, 1991, I believe. This volcanic eruption, they want to mimic. They want to mimic a volcanic eruption. They want to do full-scale solar geoengineering, mimic the Mount Pinatubo effect, they're calling it, by doing a full-scale geoengineering program with jets. So when, once they do this, and they tell us in the paper, hey, we're saving you, don't worry, we're going to have black days. We're going to have days where they literally black out our sun. Okay? So global warming fears set the stage for normalization of it all. They talk about who should do it and why, and it's complicated. It's initially resisted, but we need it. Okay? Delivering solar geoengineering materials may be feasible and affordable. So they start talking about the cost of it all and how they can actually do this. Don't worry. Mother Earth has a fever. This is an article through PBS by David Keith. David Keith is the bad guy who's, who says he's got a plan, he can block out our sun, don't worry. It's a controversial but cheap solution. The central idea is to make the planet a little bit more reflective. This is a no-name publication out of India, Gizmodo. This publication, but the thing is, is these no-name publications, you've got kids and even us, we're in our phones, we're scrolling through, it's a headline. We're being programmed by bombardment of information. And this is just another headline. So people think they're being educated. And they read this, and it says that airplanes have offset a third of global warming. Okay? It says the fact is that our planet desperately needs a little sunscreen. And it says we should be pumping aerosols into the air to shield our planet from the scorching sun. Okay? Gizmodo. Sorry, folks. Chem chemtrail conspiracies are BS. Okay? The same publication is manifesting the will of the public. Okay? This is what civil society actors are trained and told to do behind closed doors in Washington, D.C. Manifest the will of the public. And scare you into thinking that they're saving you. The polar bears are fine. Okay? But... They want you to think that it's your fault because you drove a car, your CO2 is killing these poor animals. This skinny polar bear saw one billion people. Okay? I post something online, some truth about chemtrails, and it gets filtered, censored, and blocked. I go back on my Facebook timeline with my 20,000 followers, and it's gone or blank. This thing got shoved in front of a billion people. A billion people felt bad for this Polar bear, be very worried. Say, we're reaching a tipping point. We need to do something about it, right? And then all of a sudden, they want to tax our carbon. OK? So we're going to live in a world where our carbon emissions are taxed. So we have to pay for that bill. Then they come along and they say, well, we can capture that carbon. Again, David Keith, Bill Gates, patented technology. They're going to capture the carbon. And they're going to say, you're welcome. You owe us for that. Then they're going to block out our sun. They're going to say, you're welcome, and we're going to get the bill while they're taxing our carbon emissions. We talked about this. Exclusive rights to saving the planet. This very small group of globalists claim that they have the exclusive rights to saving us and that we don't get it, and they do. Bless you. So then 
Here we are in December, okay? So just a few months after the publications came out, full onslaught of publications saying chemtrails are not real, chemtrails are not real, chemtrails are not real. Now they have a solution to global warming. It's calcite, okay? And really, this calcite paper is completely bogus. It's four pages, it's by David Keith, and he even says in it that he has no idea whether or not it'll work, okay? He has no idea what it'll do in the atmosphere with the other chemicals, and they're just trying to confuse you, right? So they say these aerosols could alleviate global warming. This, that Huffington Post, that's a chemtrail. That's a chemtrail, and they're telling you that they have a solution it's aerosolized, aerosolized calcite, all right? And you're like, oh, well, that sounds harmless. It's antacids to relieve climate change. Scientists think so. These are all the same BS publications, along with a few major ones, because they're all bought, telling you what to think. So you can either think for yourself or not. You can either take authority as the truth or truth as the authority. It's up to you. And it's up to you to decide if you want to think or not or be told how to think. And that's just the w world we live in now. They are just trying to confuse you, okay? So here I've juxtaposed, chemtrails are not real, annoyed scientists published study on chemtrail conspiracy theories. Sorry folks, chemtrails are conspiracy or false. So supposedly, these scientists were just fed up with all these people talking about chemtrails, right? Because there's so many of us out there talking about it, right? Well, no, there's not. They're preemptively programming, preemptively. They know that there's going to be a fuss when they try to block out the sun, so they're preemptively conditioning us and programming us and framing our construct, our mental construct, framing the debate, problem, reaction, solution. And then over here, scientists develop an aerosol to repair the ozone. Aerosols can, can significantly cool down the planet without damaging the ozone. Atmos atmospheric antacid. Scientists consider new approaches. Okay? This is all plan behind closed doors, right? But we're not privy to it. So I just got to get Google alerts and try to figure it out for myself. And then here we are in December, in January. Well, how are we going to tell the public that we're going to block out their sky? Well, let's not tell them that they're going to lose their sunshine because, you know, the farmers and people that like getting suntans and people who, you know, need to live on this planet, they might get upset. So first we'll tell them that they're not going to have any stars, right? So I start getting all these alerts about astronomy. Geoengineering schemes are going to block out your night sky. We're not going to be able to see the stars anymore. Well, guess what? They're doing it not just at night. We're going to lose our sunshine, too. They're going to turn the sky white. We're not going to have a sun. OK, but this is how they condition us, right? They've got to walk us through it. Otherwise, there'll be public outcry. So first, they'll tell us that we're going to lose our night sky. Let's just tell them they're going to lose the night sky. <sighs> and then the media, how they play this. Trump is backing a dangerous wall in the sky. So there was the wall that he wanted to build, and the media just plays with our heads and divides us and divides us and divides us. Either you think Trump is good or bad, pick a side, right? Are you? This sexual orientation, are you fat, are you skinny, are you tall, are you white, what are you? Divide and conquer, divide, 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 right? This is all of our skies, this is all of our air, this is our children's future. This is everybody is involved here, all right? But they want to divide you. Wall in the sky, right? So they're using Trump as a scapegoat. But Obama signed off on it, and they've been doing it for years. But they're normalizing it now. They want to normalize it so they can do it more and condition us to thinking that they're saving us from our car emissions. You saw that playing God Obama? OK. So they have radical methods to stop climate change. Aerosols to protect the Earth from global warming will be sprayed into the stratosphere next year. But scientists warn the results could be catastrophic. <laughs> right? So they still are conditioning us with that it's really scary but we need it you know and so we get it's part of the it's part of the mental brainwashing conditioning if you know anything about that they first put you into this state of fear 
Your fear has a specific brainwave pattern. Once you're in fear, then they can tell you, dance like a chicken. You know what I'm saying? This is April, April of this year. April and March. These are real headlines. These are real headlines. Are we about to be told chemtrails are real? Harvard says emissions could save the Earth. It's not Harvard, it's one guy, David W. Keith. Okay? Now, March 25th, we've got new clouds for you, 12 of them. They're preemptively programming you. They've got the new clouds, they put them in the books, they put them in the, in the university level, the educational system, even the kindergartners are being taught about these new clouds, 12 new clouds. How do we have new clouds? And how does this correspond to this entire agenda push? This is a real headline. Are we about to be told Kim Drills are real? This is all in the past six months. Okay, that's David Keith right there. In March, it's official. The sky will be sprayed in geoengineering experiment to block out the sun. Okay, eyes to the sky. We got 11 new types of clouds, but the controversy includes vapor trails. Okay. And the name for these vapor trails, homo mutatus, which literally means man-made. Okay? Conspiracy theory no more, March 29th. This is current news. This is a pivotal point in our lifetimes. Our children will ask us, what did we do to stop this? They will ask us what it was like to have blue skies. And they keep putting a dollar amount on it to make it seem feasible and okay. It's only $20 million. And they're launching it, okay? They have normalized it to the point that they're telling us that they're doing it. Okay? Um, let's talk about it later. It's, it's, they is the, is, like I said, the military industrial, it's, it's, it's this, the they is, is, is actually one of the toughest things. The they is a rogue, covert, black ops, military industrial complex that's behind the scenes, okay? After 9-11, 50% of the budget for the military went black ops. The people signing the paychecks don't even know where the government money is going, okay? And then, and then NASA, of course, just lies all day, and they got $54 million a day to do it. Geoengineering gets green light from federal scientists 2017. Trump presidency opens door, okay? They're shoving it down our throats. This is real, fake, real news, <laughs> right? And then they're actually coming out with names for all of it. And they just want to confuse you. They want to confuse one portion of the populace, and then the other portion of the populace, they want them to feel like that they're so smart and educated educated, right? So you, you try to wake someone up and they say, no, that's just the sorkum horizontal arc. Okay? Those clouds are called sorkum horizontal arcs now. Doesn't that sound fancy? Right? If you're able to even plant that word in your head and tell someone, no, 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 that's a sorkum horizontal arc, haven't you read? Right? Read what? Right? So, so the, and then this is a, this phenomenon of a rainbow effect is through diffraction. It's called cloud iridescence. It's also called fire rainbows, okay? Let me just read you one sentence. Brightly colored circumhorizontal arc occur mostly during summer and between particular latitudes. When the sun is very high in the sky, sunlight entering flat hexagon-shaped ice crystals get split into individual colors just like a prism. I'm reading more than one sentence. The conditions required to form a fire rainbow are very precise. The sun has to be an elevation of 58 degrees or greater. They make it sound so scientific and make you feel so educated. 58 degrees, certain latitudinal coordinates, hexagonal shapes, circumhorizontal arc. It's all one thing, right? It's all chemtrails. It's all geoengineering. It's all solar radiation management, stratospheric aerosol injections. Whatever word you want to give it, it's all treason. Yeah. 
Homo genitus cirrus. Okay? I came across this. I thought it was a, a fake meme. I thought somebody had made this as a joke. This is real. This is from the, 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 the meteorologists are all part of that same program. They're all getting handed a script, and they're told to read it, and they have no choice. And already, it's time for governance, OK? This is something that they just shoved down our throats for the past few months. And they say they're going to be doing it in the future. And they say, don't worry, that it's not real six months ago. But now, on April 24th, which is two weeks ago, now they're already talking about how are they going to govern this? this. How are they going to govern this? <laughs> right? Pretty quick. They're, they're pushing this agenda full speed, full speed ahead. They're already talking about how to govern something that we're still slowly waking up to that they're going to be doing it to us publicly. So I had this huge plan. I was going to go on this tour around the country. It was going to, this was going to be uh, the middle of the tour. And then I was going to go to Chicago for May 18th. I did a crowdfund. I wanted to raise all this money, get the whole nation involved and protest this and not let them have this meeting. Didn't happen. Not enough people are awake yet, right? It's OK. So in Chicago on May 18th, it's the first annual research roundtable on global, global climate change governance geoengineering. They've been planning on how to govern the geoengineering for years. And now they're doing it out in the open in public. Okay? I submitted a paper through, I, I hired a PhD, wrote a paper about how they should take human rights, that we have the right to environmental decision making, right? And um, the paper was rejected. Patrick Roddy, he's speaking here today. He also wrote a paper. His paper was rejected. Okay. Raphael wrote a paper. Her paper was rejected. We wanted to speak to them and tell them that the public perception and opinion will play a role in the governance regime, self-proclaimed regime. They're asking here, what role will public perception and opinion play? Okay. Let me translate, like, let me translate this. Will the public realize what we're doing, or can we get away with this? Will there be riots in the street when we block out the sun? Given the ethical framework, should we even do this? Yeah, well, they're doing it already. They're talking about governing it, and they call themselves a regime. OK, this is not a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy, for sure. OK. So resources, please visit my website, actualactivist.com. StopSprayingUs.com is Patrick's website. Climate Change Agenda is Terry Lawton's website out of Ireland. Bye Bye Blue Sky, Suzanne Marr out of Ontario. These are all activists that care, that are just trying to get their word out there. OK? This is our job, and our job costs us money. Last year, we had this same thing in Vancouver. The turnout was a little better, but everybody in that, the demographic was very old. I couldn't believe that everybody in the audience was in their 60s, 70s, 80s. Everyone was. And I attributed that to three things. One, they don't just listen to their phones. There's lots of young people there. In Vancouver? Everyone. Everyone. I just, I'm sorry. I just had to let that one go. I was OK. All right. There were a handful of youth. The primary demographic there were older. All right, I'm just going to skip that. Look, when you're trying to wake up the kids, and you go to universities, and you spend thousands of dollars and thousands of flyers, and you're going to elementary schools and high schools and all this, and everybody in the, in the crowd has gray hair, okay? it's because the younger generation has already been gotten to. It's true. So next up, we have Raphael from New Orleans. What's your name? My name is Matt Landman. And um, I'm ending it with this Martin Luther King quote. But I kind of froze here because I was interrupted. Um, so our life begins to end when things that matter when we're silent, right? So here's the deal. 
The silence is, is deafening. It's deafening. It is up to us. We are here for a reason. It's because we're either intrigued, we're curious, or we want to learn, or we're already awake. Most of the people in here are already awake. They want to come here to support this, to show solidarity, right? And to bring the information forward, right? This is truth. All of this is truth. Nothing I just said up here is, it can even be criticized, right? You guys can make fun of my desktop, but this is actually really clean right now, okay? <laughs> there was a time when Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, Mar Malcolm X, okay? There was a time when people got pissed and they did something about it, right? And they made things change, okay? That time is gone, and they know it. They know that they can program you through social media. They know that as long as they get to the next generation, that the gap will make them win, okay? And we can't let that gap happen. That's the thing. It's up to us. And again, I'm not happy with this demographic. We're on a university, okay? Where are the kids? Okay, I passed out 2,000 flyers yesterday on campus. That's great, they're out in the sun. Well, this actually matters. Okay, so the thing is, is it's up to us to carry this information forward. It's up to us to be the change. And if we don't do it, we're not gonna have any sun. Thank you. Thank you.